Hello everybody, it's Scott. I've got the Bodies in Motion site open and I'm just going to have a little look around, uh, look at some new content from this week, uh, give you guys a little bit of a tour of the interface, some things that you might not have noticed so far, and then we will do a little bit of anatomy lecture and review the artwork for the week. So here we go. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I think everybody has, we have this section down here which will give you access to some of the top rated motions which are filed by editor's choice or you can click to the new tab and this has um, all the latest motions this is just literally by date uh, what has been uploaded recently and so you'll see that we actually have a bunch of new motions in uh, kickboxing so uh, boxing here with boxing gloves and kickboxing here uh, and then also some really beautiful new parkour motions um, and I'll just click through to these and you see I'm not logged in so actually I will log in and I just wanted to step through these because they are amazing and some of the, the high-res frames on this are really special um, and we'll give this a second to download and please guys when you're going full screen be patient right this uh, these are on down res frames so these are the full resolution frames uh, so there's a lot of there's a lot of size a lot of a lot of data da to download when you have a sequence right so uh, be patient with full screen view um, the idea is that you want to look at something uh, with a lot of detail so uh, you have to wait for it uh, so yeah these are great uh, one thing I hope everybody's noticed is uh, onion skin all right, so onion skin mode is a way to kind of ghost the last few frames over the uh, over the image, right? So it kind of does an alpha fade, um, kind of a cross fade, and it gives you kind of the last two instances of where the body was at. Uh, and this is actually very useful in conjunction with the frame interval, right? So if you guys haven't seen the frame interval. In the lower left hand corner this gives you the step the sequence step right by default it's one which means you play every frame as you're going through the motion right but you set that say you're drawing and you want to have a bigger change between each step you set it to two or three it will put the spacing further apart right so you can see as i step through i'm hitting every third frame right now and this is also really useful with onion skin view, so you can literally track your drawings across the screen um, and see where the key poses are, right? Um, so, of course, the intention of the interval is to be used with the drawing timer, right? So when you run the sequence, if you haven't seen this, you run the sequence through, it goes 10 frames a second by default, but um, you can turn it down to slower and eventually you'll get to the drawing timer right so if you're doing timed drawings and you want to have it step through automatically that's when you use this and this again respects the frame interval so at the end of 45 seconds this will skip forward two frames to the next pose which would be here and so on and so on until you get really tired or you've completed an amazing sequence okay and this goes up to one minute two minutes and five minutes in the end um, so useful for longer drawings I think anything longer than five minutes uh, you can time it yourself right this is really just to keep you on task when you're doing kind of short gestures okay so uh, another thing I hope people have noticed and maybe you haven't but uh, Keywords, if you go down through here, there's all these, uh, all the motions are keyworded and you can click through on any keyword, right? So it will bring up related, uh, all the motions with the same keyword. And if I click, say, backflip on this motion, I will get not just his backflip in the browse view, but all the backflips that are currently in the library. Uh, so you can click through and see what's what. Uh, and then for people who, uh, if I just browse all again, if you haven't noticed this, this is another 
uh, way to get in and filter uh, motions, right, to help you find stuff. And this filters by motion set, which is all of these. So these are all the motion sets currently in the library, uh, which is expanding weekly. And then also you can go through down here, right? So if some of you have seen the, uh, the introduction video, you will notice this. But if you haven't, uh, then this is probably your first introduction. So if I click on any of these keywords, I'll get the keyword filter, in this case, parkour. And then the keyword list prunes, right? So you get, uh, you get to see what has those keywords left, right? So essentially the list gets smaller and only the relevant keywords are still visible. And so you can quickly kind of trim down your list, right? So if I want anything with stairs in it, uh, it's so far these motions, right? Maybe not expected, but here's stairs, here's stairs, and here's a Moy bridge with stairs as well. Cropped in quite close, actually, because it's a portrait uh, image. And while I've got the filter panel uh, open, I just want to show you guys this top keyword, uh, which is multicam. Okay. Um, by the way, keywords are sorted by, currently sorted by number of occurrences. So the top keywords have the most instances. Okay. Uh, so if I click multicam, that gives us access to all these motions that are photograph from multiple camera angles and all those extra camera views are in the library at the same time synced uh, with the with the main view okay so if we look at for example male ballet one uh, you can see the alternate camera angle here and that's great uh, one last feature that I'm going to show in the interface that you may not be aware of is the synced multicam view in full screen so we still have the alternate camera angles uh, that we saw in the motion view, uh, but we also have this available to us when we have two camera, two or more camera angles. Some motions have three, uh, and this is the kind of the synced view, right? So you get to see both uh, camera angles simultaneously, and this is great for working with uh, animation if you're trying to lay out a pose in three dimensions and you know, try to do the transitions. Uh, it's very difficult sometimes to have a single angle and understand fully what's going on with uh, joints relative to each other. Uh, and so often the second angle is enough information to resolve that. Um, and that's why we have it. Uh, in addition, uh, if you're just studying form and not necessarily animation, you get a second perspective on an anatomical feature. For example, in this instance, we're looking at kind of the ang how sartorius, this muscle, appears in two different views, right? Uh, it's really interesting because you get to see its relationship in this instance to the top of the tibia. Uh, and maybe I'll just uh, show this. So somewhere up here, is the anchor point for this muscle, which is the kind of the bony point of the pelvis, the front of your pelvis, called the anterior superior iliac spine. Okay, and it's way up here. I didn't crop it uh, with the image I should have, maybe. But what we have is sartorius coming all the way down here to uh, the tibia, right? Grabs on to the medial surface right here, medial meaning middle. And you can see on this guy, the muscle is a strap, right? It's, it's so developed. Um, and if you want to learn anything about this muscle, um, I recommend you just go through uh, these ballet motions uh, because you can see the form and the function quite clearly. Okay, so that's coming in. And, you know, so the knee, I think, is a mystery to a lot of people because there's so much variability to the forms. Um, it's hard to know which is bony, which is, well, what bone it is. So tibia, femur, patella, uh, <clears throat> ligament. Um, there's some fat. There's a lot of skin. There's some muscles going by as well. So it kind of is a bit of a mystery. But this is what's happening, right? So we have the plateau of the tibia up here in 
tibial surface, what, what you would call the shin, right here, uh, kind of the exposed surface of the tibia coming down, and like that. And then what happens with the rest of the knee is coming up through here is the femur, right? So uh, essentially two blocks sitting on top of each other. You have the, uh, the tibia, which is a nice flat surface, and then you have a rolling pin of a uh, of these what's called condyles, essentially rolling surfaces, and those just roll back and forth on this flat surface of the tibia. Um, there are some other things in there that are important. Uh, you may have heard of menisci, uh, medial and uh, lateral meniscus, essentially little donuts of cartilage that. Um, that the rolling pin rolls back and forth on. Those sit in here. And you can see the, the ligament, uh, the, the patellar tendon coming down to attach to this point, right? Okay, so that's, that's kind of what's happening, right? So uh, this is interesting, and you can see it, again, from multiple camera angles. Lots of things to talk about in here. Obviously, the quadriceps are in here. And I would just say about the quadriceps, um, when, you're, when you have this boundary of the, the sartorius, um, everything this way, at least when you're looking at kind of this inner surface of the thigh, the medial surface, um, all the mechanics and the hardware of the quadriceps hook up in here, right? So essentially the, the visible three heads, which is vastus medialis on the unsurprising, hopefully medial side, uh, rectus femoris coming right down the middle, right? And yeah, it's this one. And then on the lateral side, just out of view is vastus lateralis. And that would be on this leg what we're looking at here. Okay, there's other there's other hardware coming through here that we're not going to talk about today, maybe sometime in the future. Um, big modifier of form on the lateral surface of the thigh. Um, but as far as muscle goes, that's vastus lateralis and just out of view over here. Okay, so that's, uh, that's a little bit on the bones of the knee, kind of the construction of the knee, and how muscles come in and uh, and attach. Okay, uh, so that was just a little bit on the anatomy of this guy's legs. Um, if you were talking about, I didn't crop off anterior superior iliac spine, it's up underneath the top of his shorts, just in here. You can see the vector from this muscle just ending up here. Uh, and I don't know if that was enough anatomy for today. Um, I had not intended to kind of review that, but I couldn't resist it. Um, in fact, I wanted to just continue a little bit with what we talked about last week. And uh, I think maybe this guy, this I think this pose is where to do it, right? So we were talking about deltoids last week. Um, and I think specifically we were talking about what's happening up here with the, the pectoral muscles. and. In a, one or two, I think we, we talked about some tricep as well. So we talked about the insertion of the origin of the tricep. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna view this a little bit. Uh, I'll draw on this for a second. Okay, so if you remember last week, we were talking about triceps um, and we talked about the three heads, right? So this is the lateral head it's sitting up like this and you can see what I call the egg and the tail, right? So this is kind of like a, a comma or an apostrophe, right? And then the big lesson from last week, which um, I don't think we illustrated perfectly because of the pose, but the thing I said was important was that this, this head right here is the long head, and it goes up and it grabs onto the scapula, right? And it grabs on right there, and that ends up being sandwiched between the form of the deltoid, which is the three-headed muscle up here, right? So 
this is the what would be called what we would call something named the acromial head. Acromial. I don't know if I spelled that right. I think I did. And the posterior head right here. Okay, now both of those, uh, you know, they insert onto the humerus out here. Okay, so you get pull from pulling the humerus up in the instance of the acromial head and in the instance of the posterior head, pulling it actually towards up here, which is known as the spine of the scapula. Okay, so this is pulling it back, pulling it up. And then we have this nice uh, space in between the, the deltoid and this big form, this big mysterious form, which I've not mentioned yet. Um, but this guy is one of the, consider one of our climbing muscles, right? And nobody respects this muscle. Everybody in the, knows about pectoral muscles in the front. Um, the back view of the, the body, right? Um, this is kind of the hero muscle of the back. We have pectoral muscles up here. In the back, this is something called the teres major. Um, and it's an important kind of muscle that articulates the humerus. Up here, kind of imagine an axis with a, a straight bone in it. That is your upper arm bone. And this guy comes from the scapula and attaches in underneath the long head of the tricep, right? So in fact, it pulls the humerus back towards the scapula. That's what this muscle does. There's other kind of muscles that articulate and help us climb as well. Um, and latissimus dorsi is another big one. We'll talk about that some other time. But this is the, this is the important thing for now, is I wanted you to uh, understand the ordering that happens here, right? So this is finding a little space in between here. Okay, I'm back in the library and I was just uh, flipping through another uh, boxing motions. I uh, came, uh, came upon this, uh, this particular still and this is described beautifully what I'm talking about. Okay, so you can see uh, just with a little bit more articulation of the same, nearly the same pose, um, this becomes super clear, right? This interlocking that I talked about. Okay, so again, the forms just to highlight this is the long head. You can see it, it has a, this tail that, that goes up, right? It comes in like this, and then, of course, Terra's major going underneath, right? That's the important uh, interlocking. Okay, and there's other stuff that happens, right? We have latissimus dorsi, which is a thin sheet of muscle, kind of actually overlapping this muscle as well, right? So kind of carving off the top of it, or carving off the bottom half of this with the top of its muscle. Okay, so this is, again, just a, this is probably the perfect view of this interlocking. This is close. This describes it in a, in a slightly more um, subtle manner. And then this is quite extreme, but perfect for illustrating the point. And now my favorite part of the week, which is to review the artwork that's gone up uh, over the week. And uh, this page that I have is the editor's choice. Uh, from last week, so some great submissions. Um, I love all the work that's been put up, not just the editor's choice. Everybody who submitted stuff, it's so, I'm grateful to you because really it's, it's a great service to the community to share what you've been working on, uh, your studies, I mean, your drawings, your gestures, your sculpts, whatever it is. I mean, it's all, it's all a contribution and everybody gets enriched by seeing uh, what other people have been working on. So, Keep it coming. If you've been doing studies and haven't posted them, please put them up. Just uh, you don't have to be a, a paid subscriber to submit artwork. You just have to be registered. So you can always just register up here and then you can upload artwork. Um, and I love to see it. So please uh, consider submitting. So uh, these are some of the best from last week. I love all these tone uh, tonal studies from Jonathan. 
uh, very Michelangelo-esque or kind of Renaissance sanguine treatment. Uh, super nice. Uh, Michael Hampton has some great gestures in this parkour section, almost a master class in kind of constructive gestural drawing. Beautiful uh, capoeira study from Tom Gately. Uh, definitely check that out. Uh, fun GIF from Alex Chu, uh, Marvel storyboard artist who I tried to get to get onto the beta and contribute some artwork, but she was too busy. But she finally submitted this up and is really fun and fresh, great style. Um, and a couple more GIFs, uh, just a really uh, nicely pieced together uh, motion of the Asian dance uh, motion set. Some more from Michael Hampton. Beautiful Ecorche GIF, so animation of uh, our male ballet set. And uh, the winner for this week, I think my absolute favorite, when I saw these can't come in, I was blown away. And these are the top three. Uh, these are kind of just expressive one, two, and three from Mira. And if you click through, you can see more of Mira's work at her ArtStation website. And uh, of course, you can link back through to the motion that she referenced. And uh, just an amazing uh, interpretation, very stylistic, very uh, expressive. So great work, Mira. Love it. Okay, that really is it for this week, uh, but I wanted to leave you guys with a little challenge uh, for everybody out there who's an artist listening to this. I challenge you to uh, navigate to the Asian Dance 2 uh, motion. You can search it up here and that will get you here. Um, and uh, draw from this this week. So uh, work through this motion, do some gestures, do some longer studies, uh, however you wish. Do an animated GIF if you are up for it. And, uh, and then please upload it. And the idea is you guys take me up on this challenge and I will do some drawings from this as well. Uh, this section, the related artwork section, will be deep uh, with studies from this motion. And then next week I will review uh, all of those and uh, choose my favorite. Okay, so uh, just something to keep you on task for the week and busy and active because um, it's great to browse through the library, but until you dig in and actually start sketching as a habit, um, you know, you won't, uh, you won't improve. So uh, let's get this to be a habit, and uh, your responsibility is then to just upload one or more uh, sketches down here. Okay, I will see you again next week. Thanks, guys.